HRC, 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 Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader Church. Shalom, 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 brothers and sisters. Coming back in for the second segment and finishing up this teaching on the uh, promises and covenants given to Abraham. Hope it's been very edifying, and we're going to pick right back up where we left off. We're mm-hmm. discussing how uh, salvation opportunities for everybody, and really encouraging the brethren of our forefather to um, turn on to Ahayala Hayam, as we read in Jubilees chapter 15. They said that the spirits of error had been placed over the other nations. So we can understand that all the religions of the world are vanity. Right. It's Ahaya that made the heavens. Ahaya is who created all. It's Ahaya's word that all things are exist and do consist. That's right. So to, uh, to all the nations, to all the world, we have to turn unto Ahaya. There is no salvation in any other. And there is no salvation in any other name besides Yache. Mashiaka. So may we be encouraged to do these things. And he dwells in a temple made without hands, so that lets you know that he's not dwelling in any of these religions today. So just to give you some. I like this guy. There you go. Ah, yeah, it's good. Because it says the kingdom of heaven is neither here nor there. That's right. And they tell you, look, hey, hello there. Don't believe in the kingdom of heaven is within you. That's right. Because we have to prepare our houses. This is, as our brother has mentioned, that we may be a clean temple for Mishyaka Yache to come in and make his abode. He said he is the poor and he knocketh. And for anyone that opened, he'll come in and sup with him. And when he comes in and sup with us, then Ahaya Alahaya will come into us and dwell in us. That's right. Right, we're going to pick up at Genesis chapter 21, verse, verse 5. All right. Five. Okay. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Ichichakwa was born unto him. And Chitty said, Elohim hath made me to laugh, so that all that hear will laugh with me. Ichichakwa, you see. <laughs> Continue. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Chitty should have given children suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age. And that's the laughter and merriment. You know, she's laughing when it says joy. Right. To know that I has caused her to bear seed. Continue. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Ichichakwa was weaned. And Chitty saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. And we can look and see what happened through the testimonies because there's more to this story than what was said here in Genesis. All right. If we touch to Jasher chapter 21, verse 11 to 16, we can get more understanding of what happened at this time. Jasher chapter 21, verse 11. Mm-hmm. And Ishmael, the son of Abraham, was grown up in those days. He was 14 years old when Chitty had bare Ichichakwa to Abraham. And Elohim was with Ishmael, the son of Abraham, and he grew up. And he learned to use the bow and became an archer. Right. And when Ichichakwa was five years old, he was sitting with Ishmael at the door of the tent. So Ishmael is 19 years old now. 14 plus 5 is 19. And mm-hmm. Ishmael came to Ichichakwa and seated himself opposite to him. And he took the bow and drew it and put the arrow in it and intended to slay Ichichakwa. So now we know the backstory of what is meant that he mocked, like he was dead. He really wanted to kill him because right. the scriptures tell that Ishmael is a wild man. That's right. His hand will be against every man and then there's against his in uh, Genesis chapter 16, verse 11 and 12. It foretold of that. And this is why we understand there's many wars in the Middle East and among the nations of the Ishmaelites to this day. 
It says in Genesis chapter 16, verse 11, so that you can understand, here we see in a part of his wild nature, he was wanting to kill Isaac. So we can understand why Sarah is going to say what she's going to say. Huh. Huh? And Chitty saw the act which Ishmael desired to do to her son, Ichichakwa. And it grieved her exceedingly on account of her son. And she sent for Abraham and said to him, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for her son shall not be heir with my son. But thus did he seek to do unto him this day. Now we can go back to Genesis. So we, now we understand what transpired when she said she saw uh, Ishmael mocking. Uh, we're back I'm in Genesis back, yeah. chapter 21, 21 verse 10, 10 now. Mm -hmm. Wherefore she said to Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Ichichakwa. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And Elohim said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman. And all that Chitty hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in it's a chakwa shall I see be called. And there we see also Abraham was tried in that. Abraham was found faithful because Abraham knew Allahim would take care of his other son and his other wife, Hagar, as well. Continue. And also of the son of thy bondwoman, I will make a nation because he is thy seed. Therefore, that's why the missionaries have been prospered as they have today. Right. And that's why we really encourage our children of Abraham to. Turn from the idols of the world, all of the idols of the world, right. and become true children of Abraham according to the Spirit, by the Spirit of Mishyaka Yache, the true Savior, yeah. and that will turn all men into a new creature by his effectual work in us. So we encourage those of all nations to do this so that we may be saved. Um, so we see that in the covenant given to Isaac, because we were looking at the promises and covenants, because when Isaac and shall his seed be called. Now let's look at Psalms chapter 105, verse 8 to 15. Please. Uh, Psalms 105, verse 8. He has remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Ichichakwa, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law. So the oath was made to Ichikakwa and then to Yaakobi was given for a law. So it was set. There's nothing can be undone about this eternal covenant. Right? And to Ichiriala for an everlasting covenant. There it is. Saying unto thee will I give the land of Canaan and the lot of your inheritance. And there is the, the covenant of receiving that land is to the Israelites that are in Mishyaka Yachi. Because Yachi is the seed that the promise is made to Okay. When they were but a few men in number, yea, very few and strangers in it. Right. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people. Yes, remember we read in Genesis 15 and 13 how we'll be sojourning in a land that's not ours. So touching on our forefathers doing that. All right, continue please to verse 15. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. So though we were being afflicted, I had been suffering by to destroy us. That's right. Yeah, I had been magnified. And in continuing with Genesis chapter 26, verse 1 to 5, so we can see the covenant, because he said, In Isaac shall thy seed be called. All right. Genesis chapter 26 verse 1 And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Ichichakwa went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. And Ahia appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. There we see the oath is transferred to Ichikakwa, the seed in which his name will be called. 
and he's speaking of the same things. Okay. Uh, Genesis 26 and 4. Mm -hmm. And I will make thy seed to multiply the stars of heaven. And I will give unto thy seed in these countries. And in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Mm -hmm. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And there we see confirmation that Abraham was perfect with Ahaya, Allah Hayam. Yes, he kept all his laws, statutes, commandments, his judgments, and obeyed his voice. And we are encouraged to do the same thing, to partake in the faith of Abraham, because faith without works is dead. According to James chapter 2, verse 14 to 26, it tells us of how we have to show our faith by our works. And Abraham is an example of how he showed his faith by his works, because he kept the charge of Allah Hayam. And he was not impatient, nor unfaithful, nor slow to act in any of the trials that Allah had put him through to perfect him. Because through adversity we are brought unto perfection, even as Yache is made perfect. When he had to partake in dying, he was brought unto perfection as well. Is there any verse about Ichichakwa? Being perfect. Sorry, something. Because we have the one on Yaakov, I wanted to see if we could go through and show that all of them were perfect. Let's see how high our hands are here. So let's try, we got Jubilees chapter 21, verse 1. Okay. It says, and in the fourth year of the fourth week of this jubilee, Abraham called Isaac his son and commanded him, saying, I am become old and know not the day of my death and am full of my days. And behold, I am 175 years old and throughout all the days of my life I have remembered Ahaya and sought with all my heart to do his will and walk uprightly in all his ways. My soul has hated idols and I have despised those that served them. And I have given my heart and spirit that I might observe to do the will of him who created me. For he is the living Allah and he is holy and faithful and he is righteous beyond all. And there is with him no accepting of men's persons and no accepting of gifts. For Allah is righteous and executes judgment on all those who transgress his commandments and despise his covenant. And do you, my son, observe his commandments, and his ordinances, and his judgments, and walk not after the abominations, and after graven images, and after the molten images, and eat no blood, that all of animals, or cattle, or any bird which flies in the heaven? And if you do slay a victim as an acceptable peace offering, speaking of the animals, slay ye it, and pour out his blood upon the altar and all the fat of the offering offer on the altar with fine flour and meat offering mingled with oil with his drink offering offer them all together on the altar of a burnt offering it is a sweet savor before ahaya this is how we see that animal sacrifice had been of old from the days of adam so we know that the salvation wasn't an animal sacrifice Let's see what else it is here he goes on and jump to verse 10 and eat meat on that day and on the second day and let not the sun on the second day go down upon it till it is eaten and let nothing be left over for the third day. What he's instructing his son is what's written in the law. You're right. For it is not acceptable, for it is not approved and let it no longer be eaten and all who eat thereof will bring sin upon themselves. For thus I have found it written in the books of my forefathers and in the words of Enoch and in the words of Noah. Showing that Abraham, there were books written and Abraham understood there were laws that they were keeping and he was instructing his son to keep them. He goes on to say verse um, 21. 
I see, my son, that all the works of the children of men are sin and wickedness, and all their deeds are uncleanness and an abomination and a pollution, and there is no righteousness with them. Beware, lest you should walk in their ways and tread in their paths, and sin a sin unto death before Allah Eluya Ono. Else he will hide his face from you and give you back into the hands of your transgressions and root you out of the land and your seed likewise from under heaven, and your name and your seed shall perish from the whole earth. And this also is just no being forewarned of what will happen if you sin, right. seeing as though Isaac received all the promises, let's just know he didn't sin. Right. Turn away, verse 23, turn away from all their deeds and all their uncleanness, and observe the ordinance of Allah, Eluya, or no and do his will and be upright in all things and he will bless you in all your deeds and will raise up from you a plant of righteousness through all the earth is speaking of yache throughout all generations of the earth and my name and your name shall not be forgotten under heaven forever go my son in peace may allah eluya ono my alahayam and your alahayam strengthen you to do his will and may he bless all your seed and the remnant of your seed for the generations forever with all righteous blessings that you may be a blessing on all the earth and he went out from him rejoicing so he received all the word that his father said and there was a reason they went on rejoicing and through precepts we can get understanding it was because of Isaac's response to what Abraham had commanded him. When we read Joshua chapter 26 verse 28, it says, And Isaac answered his father and said unto him, That which my Lord has commanded, that will I do. And I will not depart from the commands of the Lord my Elohim. I will keep all that he commanded me. And Abraham blessed his son Isaac and also his children. And Abraham taught Jacob the instruction of Ahiah and his ways. So we know it's uh, shown that Isaac walked in the fear of Ahiah. But so I don't have a scripture particularly where well, you can have a scripture he gave him the whole law and he had to fulfill it to get the promise. So, so that confirms that he did it, not yeah. did so. Where's I? I thought that's good. So, you know, I definitely see that all of them had um, been sure to do what I had commanded. Right. And uh, Kobe is in Genesis 25, verse 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, and man in the field, and Yakobi was a plain man dwelling in tents. Uh, the word plain is H8535, mm -hmm. and it means perfect. Complete, one who lacks nothing in physical strength or beauty, etc. Sound, wholesome. So, for me, that shows uh, Jacob had the fruits of the spirit from a youth. Right. He was sound, real mild, meek manner. Yeah. An ordinary, quiet sort of person. That's the humility of the action, sound, meek, right. and lowly of heart. Right. Complete, so, so. morally, innocent. Having integrity, one who is morally and ethically pure, so bearing a fruit for the spirit, That's right. yeah. and undefiled, as far as the strong. There yeah, we yeah. see undefiled is right. perfect. That's right. Because you committed no sin. Right. And Jasha confirms what you were saying because Jasha 26 and 17 said, Jacob was a man perfect and wise, dwelling in tents, feeding flocks, and learning the instructions of Ahaya and the commands of his father and mother. To confirm he was perfect. Well, I want to touch that all of them kept the commandment, not just Abraham. It's very important. Matter of fact, <laughs> Genesis chapter 18, because his seed had to keep the law to um, be able to partake, as we were just saying. Genesis chapter 18, verse 17 to 19, please. This um, is when Ahia is on his way to um, destroy the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. 
Okay. And the highest said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. See? <laughs> so, I always see that the Gentiles are going to be blessed. All nations are going to be blessed in him. Continue. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. Mm -hmm. And they shall keep the way of Ahiah to do justice and judgment that Ahiah may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. So there we see right. he had to have done it. That's right. Because when he said, I know him, you know, that's talking about he right. that saith he know him and keepeth not the commandments is a liar. That's but right. Abraham wasn't a liar. Ahiah himself, he said that I know him. That's right. So Abraham was his friend. And of course, he commanded his children. We just read. Thankfully, Ahiah was gracious to put it in our hearts to read what was in um, Jubilees to hear what Abraham told Isaac right. and he indeed so, told him to keep the right way that even shows that uh, the law that Paul was talking about in Galatians 3 and 17 is not the commandments right because he already had the commandments right the commandments that existed from the beginning right no one knew the law because Noah was perfect right so we know many scriptures to confirm that Paul was speaking about the animal sacrifice hmm. It was Ahiah for that, so we get good understanding that they all were keeping the commandment. Okay. All right, can we jump to Genesis chapter 28, verse 10 to 15, please? Right. Uh, Genesis 28, verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran, and he lighted up upon a certain place and tarried there all night, because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for its pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of Elohim ascending and descending on it. And behold, Ahiah stood above it and said, I am Ahiah, Elohim of Abraham thy father, the Elohim of Ichichakwa. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And here we see the covenant passes on to Jacob. The land that he will give to his seed, where the seed is Yache, right. and all the Israelites that have the seed of Yache in them will get the land. In regards to that part of the covenant, we'll continue please. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in mm. thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. <laughs> and spread everywhere. The right. <laughs> actual spirit is going to be in all men that That's are right. called by Ahaya. Now, this is interesting because, as we have read before, Abraham gave Jacob admonitions. That's right. And we see how plain and perfect and undefiled and simple and quiet and meek spirited Jacob was from a youth. But let's jump to Jubilees chapter 19, verse 17. So we can read about what Abraham told Jacob, as well as he gave Jacob's mother, Rebekah, admonition in regards to Jacob because he saw the righteousness in Jacob and Ahayah and made him understand that Jacob was going to be the one where his name would be continued. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> Jubilee chapter 19 verse, verse 17. And he said unto her, My daughter, watch over my son Jacob, for he shall be in my stead on the earth, and for a blessing in the midst of the children of men, and for the glory of the whole seed of Shem. Mm. For I know that Ahia will choose him to be a people for possession unto himself. And Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 7 to 9 confirms that Jacob is his inheritance. Continue. Above all peoples that are upon the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. And behold, it's a talk where my son loved Esau more than Jacob. Because he had liked his venison and he was the firstborn. Right. right. But I see that thou truly lovest Jacob. Ask still further to thy kindness to him, and let thine eyes be upon him in love. For he shall be a blessing unto us on the earth, from henceforth unto all generations of the earth. Let thy hands be strong, and let thy heart rejoice in thy son Jacob. 
for I have loved him far beyond all my sons. And for us now, if we wanted to know what would be pleasing to our father Abraham, we will see. By the way, his grandson operated in such meekness and plainness and perfectness right. is what made him love him. So we know what would cause our father Abraham to love us today, okay. to operate in all the fruits of the Spirit, work in our righteousness and the law, by faith and action. He shall be blessed forever, and his seed shall fill the whole earth. Now we know that he's talking about Yachin. Right. <laughs> Continue. If a man can number the sand of the earth, his seed also shall be numbered. And all the blessings wherewith Ahayah have blessed me and my seed shall belong to Yaakov and his seed always. When Elohim said that he did not choose Israelah because they were the greatest, but because they were the least, I want to make sure it's, uh, I know exactly what time period that was before I say it. That was Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 7. Ahaya did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people, because Ahaya loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers. And Ahaya brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Now, of course, this is a waste of moment, but <laughs> Allah did not choose us because we were the greatest in number, but because we were the least. And this was said with Mushi after we came out of Egypt and after we were given the covenant. And it's interesting because the true Israelites and spirit and truth were not going to be a great multitude. They were always going to be a small number. Henceforth, we only have a remnant, which is 144,000. So to fulfill this, because we were the fewest in number, and that's why he chose us. Because if we would have been great in number, we would have been like the Gentiles, which were a great multitude beyond any man could count, being the fulfillment of the other part of Abraham's covenant or promise. But seeing that we were a small group, a small nation, Allah chose us, and that's why there's only a remnant of us that's left. It's because he's fulfilling his word here as well. Mm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> These words truly are spirit, and they really are right. life. So this was foretelling all the way in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 7, that it would be a remnant right. that would be saved. Right. It's amazing how Paul said these mysteries that were spoken of for in the law and the prophets, but are now revealed unto his saints. Right. That the Holy Spirit is bringing this understanding. But that few in number, this was testified all over the scriptures. Right. Where he said only a remnant would be saved. Actually, we we'll go to Romans. This is in the New Testament where Paul himself quoted Romans 9 and 27. It says, And Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, huh. though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, huh. a remnant shall be saved. Huh. So there we see scripturally that great multitude that was prophesied, that blessing that will come, it was not going to be just the Israelites. Because right. the prophecy says that we're going to be a remnant. Because right. the Israelites in spirit and truth are not a great multitude. No. <laughs> so we be a great multitude. Yes, we because said. by blood it's a lot of us. But by spirit it's not a lot of us. Mm. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, understand this is the end of the world. For right. those that are called to hear, this is a short work will Ahaya make upon the earth. 
Paul went on to say in Romans 9 and 29, as Isaiah said before, except Ahaya and Sabawata had left us a seed, mm. we had been as Sodoma and been like unto Gomorrah. Mm. We would have all died had not Ahaya left us a remnant. This 144,000 that are sealed of the men of Israel and the household that are under them. Fulfilling it that Allah didn't choose us because we were the greatest, because we were the least, and we are the least in the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. Let's not get sidetracked. Fine. We'll get back to that later. Uh, um, verse 23 in Jubilee is 19. Right. And all the blessings wherewith Ahia has blessed me and my seed shall belong to Jacob and his seed always. And in his seed shall my name be blessed in the name of my father. In his seed shall my name be blessed. In Yache shall the name of Abraham be blessed. Because when we are in Yache, then truly we can call Abraham our father, and it's actually true. That's right. In his seed. In his seed shall my name be blessed. The name of my father. Shem. So Shem had Yache. Noaka. He had Yache. Enoch. Kanoka. He had Yache. Mahalel. Enos. I don't know that one exactly right. yet. I'm going to learn that one. Mm -hmm. And Adam. Adam. It's interesting. Adam. That's our language. Da means to fall. Ada right. means falling. If you look at the definition for Adam, H120, it means man of low degree, right. man of low stature. He's a lower being. That means he's lesser than the angels because he's the fallen image of Allah Hayyam. Yeah. Hence, in our language, Adam means I have fallen. <laughs> Describing how Adam was made, he's a fallen image of Allah Hayyam. Mm. Because Allah Hayyam said in Genesis 1 and 26, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And of course, they're Allah Hayyam, they're in the heavens. And he, he sent his image down into the earth for the man to be made. And man was formed in the image of Allah Hayyam. And who is the image of Allah Hayyam? Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so it further helps understand by receiving that circumcision of the heart and Mishyaka being in you and becoming that new man. You're actually becoming the original man that you were supposed to be from the get-go. That's right. Do you want to keep on going? Uh, we can get to verse 30, please. Okay. Verse 26. To lay the foundations of the heaven, Ooh. and to strengthen the earth, and to renew all the luminaries which are in the firmament. It's amazing. All these things are founded upon the word of Allah Hayyam, which is Ato. When you read Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. There's a word that is not translated in the English. It's H853. And the word is Ato. This is our language. It means divine word. The example. The model. Because Yache is the example of the Allah Hayyam. And he's the divine word that was spoken. So this is all shown as Mishyaka in them that's renewing all things. Right. It's, it's just amazing. Um, verse 27. And he called Jacob before the eyes of Rebekah his mother and kissed him and blessed him and said, Jacob, my beloved son, whom my soul loveth, may Allah him bless thee from above the firmament. Mm. And may he give thee all the blessings wherewith he blessed Adam and Enoch and Noah and Shem and all the things of which he told me and all the things which he promised to give me. May he cause to cleave to thee and to thy seed forever, according to the days of heaven above the earth. Mm. And the spirits of Master Mush shall not rule over thee, or over thy seed, to turn thee from Ahaya, who is thy Allahayam from henceforth forever. Mm. And may Ahaya Allahayam be a father to thee, and thou be a firstborn son, and to the people always. And the scriptures confirm these things as, Ahaya himself told Pharaoh that Israel is his firstborn son. And this helps understand the New Testament as to why curses and blessings go to the Jew first and then the Gentile, just because the Jews are the firstborn, hence they receive the good or the bad first. Yet, all Jew or Gentile who keep the commandments, believe and trust in Yahweh Christ, 
and bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit, all the children of the living Allahim. So we thank him for his mercy and remember his covenant of Abraham to be a father of many nations. Very merciful for what he's doing. And lastly, but not least, the covenant. Well, there's also more on Yaakob, because we want to touch on all the verses pertaining to these promises. Uh, Genesis chapter 35, verse 10 to 12. Mm -hmm. So we can have touched all of them. Genesis 35, verse 10. And Allah said unto him, Thy name is Yaakob. Thy name shall not be called any more Yaakob, but Israela shall be thy name. And he called his name Israela. And Allah said unto him, I am Allah, Allah Shodai, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isitakwa, to thee I will give it, and to thy seed after thee will I give the land. Now we completely understand that these are the Israelites in the spirit and truth. By the spirit of Mishyaka Yache working in them, we receive that land of Canaan. Right. And then the Gentiles that are called by Ahayallah, and that innumerable multitude will be dwelling in the lands of their fathers, working all righteousness in all the earth unto Ahayallah, and coming to keep the feast in Jerusalem. <laughs> right. As Zechariah chapter 14 tells us. So, with that, let's go to Genesis chapter 22, we read verse 15 to 18 to touch on the oath, the last thing, the oath. That was made to Abraham. Genesis 22, verse 15. And the angel of Ahiah called unto Abraham out of heaven a second time and said, By myself have I sworn, said Ahiah, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. And at the sand which is upon the seashore, mm. and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. When he says, Thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Understand, brothers and sisters, the precepts we get understanding, right? Yes, indeed. Notice, firstly, in Genesis 22 and 17, he said, Thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Right. Singular. That seed is Mishyakayache, as Galatians chapter 3, verse 16 says. The way he possessed the gate of his enemies, Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 says, And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock will I build my church. The rock that he was talking about was actually Yache. Remember, Yache is speaking on behalf of the Father. And he was speaking of the rock, which is that spiritual rock, which is Mishyaka, that has uh, 1 Corinthians what is it? First Corinthians 10, 10, 10, 1 through 4. It tells that Yache was that spiritual rock. Mm -hmm. And he says, upon this rock will I build my church. And we know no other foundation can any man lay except Mishiaka. Mm -hmm. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is what he's talking about. That he shall possess the gates of his enemies. Because Yache is already taking victory over hell and death. And he's actually going to cast hell and death into the fire. Come judgment and you can read about that in revelation I just want to give you insight to understand that genesis chapter 22 is talking about yache and then what does he go on to say in verse 18 and in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed mm -hmm. because thou hast obeyed my voice and yeah, i be magnified in thy seed is speaking of yache and he is our done here in whom we trust Mahaya has sent to deliver us from all iniquity of the Jews and of the Gentiles. Definitely. With that, brothers and sisters, which are all the Gentiles, we now have an understanding of the oaths. This one was very nice to see the opportunity for all men. We thank Ahaya for it. We encourage you, please, if you're the first time joining us, please go back and check out the other videos. Make sure, you know, we're all on the same page. So when we're doing these teachings, we're all familiar. And we're all learning together and growing in the knowledge of the truth unto salvation by bearing fruits of the Spirit unto Mishak and Yache. But I may be magnified in us all, whatever nation you are from.
Is there um, anything else, bro? Yeah, make sure you all uh, check out the website. The website is up by the grace of Ahayah uh, plenty of information, plenty of books for PDF downloads. There's plenty of information as far as the language, uh, going into in-depth uh, information about Yiddish and the, the migration of the Israelites and also the Hebrew language, uh, over a hundred words of breakdowns, corroborating that Evo is indeed the actual Hebrew language and much more. So, so definitely go and check out the website. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave it in the box below. And you can also send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail.com. And we look forward to just having y'all a part of the family and definitely growing with one another. So, you know, all those who believe in Messiah Yache, we bless you. Amen. We magnify them. And we praise. With that, say shalom. Shalom. HRC, 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 Hebrew Readers, Hebrew Readers, Hebrew Readers Church.